As we were going from shell hole to shell hole, we noticed that the ground was getting a little warm when you, after you're in it for a while. And it was warm. It was a volcanic sand. And you didn't sit in one position very long before it got a little too hot, so you had to keep moving. If you went down certain depths, if you went over six inches, you could dig a hole and you can have a hot meal. In fact, it was a, kind of a joke. Well, you had a, a can of, like, Spam or something like that. Just a couple of guys tried it and said, hey, it is right. It cooks up a good meal enough for us. Stud and I went back to and ski to get some uh, ammo. And uh, on our way back, we ran into some Spam that was in the CP. So we each grabbed a can of Spam. And instead of coming back the same route we took, we come back a shortcut that Stud said he knew about. So we took the shortcut and got to our foxhole. Well, the next morning, these demolition guys was out there working. And they come over and said, don't go through that space over there because it's all mine. We walked through a minefield and didn't know it. As we sat there, after he told us to stay out of there, we'd seen that guys had mines piled up next to them and they were getting them out. <laughs> Just luckily we didn't hit a mine. Well, we had slept overnight in a shell hole we dug out the previous evening. And we had just got these new recruits in that replaced the ones that we lost. And I reached in my backpack and I still had a can of Spam. So I figured, well, I might as well eat breakfast now and get it over with. So just as I was getting ready to open the can of Spam and the orders come down the line were to move out. We, I put my can of Spam, I just tossed it over the side of the foxhole. We only went about 15 feet and them Japs nailed us, just pinned us down, we couldn't move. We were all behind big boulders. And these new guys were kind of nervous, they'd jump every time a boulder to hit the ground or anything. So I told them, as long as you're behind this big rock, they can't get you. And they still wanted to go back to the foxhole. I said, okay, go ahead. But time it. When the next time he fires a bullet, you got 15 seconds to get over to that hole. So they finally all got back in the hole. And I was up there behind his boulder by myself. And I thought, well, damn, I got my can of spam back there. So <laughs> next time he fired or something, I went back to the hole. Spam is over here. And all these guys are here, and I'm over here. I spot my can of Spam, and I start crawling across on my hands and knees to get it. And just as I get over to the can of Spam to reach to get it, the whole hole exploded. The mortar cell landed right in our hole. Well, I thought a truck hit me. That explosion just went up. I took the pack off my back and it slammed my mouth shut and it cracked all my teeth. This hairline crack. The foxhole was full of dust. I couldn't see. I was, my ears was ringing. I was just all shook up. And I looked and I could see the guys were still sitting cross-legged. And as the smoke was clearing, there was no tops on them. They were all blown in half. So skiing them, they spotted my hole had been blown, so they come running over and they, they took me back up into their foxhole. I get up there and then this Huggins, he seen me and he, he cracked up right there. So they had him to contend with and me, <laughs> and they had the old time. So they got a corpsman over there and they were gonna send me back to the hospital. I wouldn't go back. I told him I'm not going back. I won't go back. Well, from then on, I didn't know what was going on for three, about three days. I didn't, I didn't know where my gun was, my machine gun or nothing. And then finally I could start hearing and I got my gun back from one of the guys. I was back in business again. 
Well, after going through all that, then I realized that the can of Spam is what saved my life.